Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Divi Chat. Each week, we come on every Tuesday and talk about everything from Divi to web design and everything in between. And today's no different. However, today we have a extra special guest with us, Kenny Singh. We're going to let him introduce himself in just a few minutes. Uh, Kenny, in case you don't know, is the design director from Elegant Themes, and he is multi-talented. And so we're going to be talking about some fun stuff with him. But before we dive into the topic, let's go around and meet our panel all the way from down under representing the lower hemisphere of planet Earth is Sarah. <laughs> Hey guys, Sarah Oates here from Endure Web Studios, coming to you from Australia. It's very early, 7.04 in the morning, and you can catch me at endure.com.au or Endure Web on the socials. Awesome. And now let's head over to our UK correspondent with Mike. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Hi, everybody. My name's Mike Devitt, and I run a web design company in the UK called Web Design Pro uh, in Maidstone uh, in the county town, uh, in Kent, rather. Mate stands the county town of Kent. Uh, we've been designing and building and maintaining search engine friendly websites for six years. And the main theme we use is Divi. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and our website is webdesignpro.co. Awesome. Hey, Stephanie. Hi, Tim. Hey, everybody. I'm so happy to be here today. This is going to be a fun episode. My name is Stephanie Hudson. I'm coming at you from Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm repping Focus WP, as always, where we help agencies and freelancers and solo pros to grow and scale their business and do more of what they love by offering vetted and trained outsourced services. So you can check us out at focuswp.co, and we are hanging out in the Facebook group almost every day, pretty much all the time, Focus on Your Biz, where we talk about the business of running one of these crazy businesses. Awesome. And my name is Tim Streifler, and you can find me on at divilife.com, where I have all my Divi plugins, child themes, tutorials, and layouts. And without further ado, we have our extra special guest, Kenny Singh. Uh, so Kenny, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Cool. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, I'm Kenny. Um, I'm the design director at Elegant Themes, coming at you from the central coast of California. Um, I've been at Elegant Themes uh, since 2013. I was off for a couple of years, um, kind of uh, finding myself and uh, deciding that I really like Elegant Themes. Came back in 2017 hmm. and have been there ever since. And um, excited to talk to you guys a little bit about design today. Awesome. Yeah. And I want to just brag about Kenny for a second because a lot of people in the Divi community know of Kenny as being the design director, lead designer, elegant themes, um, overall brilliant designer. But Kenny is multi talented, as I mentioned already. Uh, he has his own pottery studio and uh, a very popular uh, pottery Instagram where he shows all his techniques and processes and stuff. And so, um, yeah, can you give us like a short kind of synopsis of, of what you do over there at, at Turn Studio? Yeah, so um, you can find that at, the Instagram is um, Turn Studio, and uh, you can also see um, the shop and a little bit about the studio at www.turn.studio. And that is something that I've been doing ever since I actually started graphic design. So I started graphic design and pottery at the same time around 2005. And so I've been doing both of those ever since um, graphic design obviously made its way into my professional full-time career. Um, but pottery has always been something that I've um, taken as a little bit more than a serious hobby. Um, and recently was able to start my own kind of pottery studio, which a community studio, but something that is big enough to where I host workshops and classes and um, private lessons and things like that. So it's going to be kind of a mix between selling my own work and helping others learn how to do pottery. Awesome. I, uh, I've actually purchased a couple of things from Turn Studio, so I highly recommend that you guys do the same. Oh, turn really? Yeah. yeah, I have I have a mug set, and uh, actually, my wife <laughs> we're in the process of, of remodeling our kitchen, and she's like, "We should just get rid of all of our existing mugs and just have Turn Studio." I was like, well, <laughs> Amy would be happy about that. <laughs> That's awesome. I want to see them, Tim. I want to. I know. I meant to have it right here so I could show everyone, and then I 
just forgot. So my apologies for that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Kenny is multi-talented. And I, I know we're going to talk about um, in a little bit some of the the future and, and kind of uh, feature upcoming features of Divi. So in case you missed it, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had the 200th episode of Divi Chat where we had Nick Roach, the CEO and founder of, of Elegant Themes on here, and he talked about some of the upcoming stuff. Um, and uh, after that, Kenny messaged me and was like, you guys cut him off right as he was getting to the good stuff because we were like trying to like <laughs> balance the time and everything. So we, we, yeah, we didn't get to the good stuff. So Kenny's going to talk about some of that good stuff. Um, but before we do, uh, we have an audience of web designers out there. And so um, in my opinion, Kenny is one of the best designers out there. And so I thought it would be cool if we heard from him on some of the design practices uh, that that he uh, recommends to us, and kind of get a, a good idea of of what that looks like. So, Kenny, what what is your process? Now, I know you mentioned offline before we got started that there's a big difference between web design and like visual product design. So maybe we'll, we'll kind of focus on the throwing. web design. Yeah. and pottery yeah exactly yeah. so maybe we'll focus on the web design but like what are some of the the things that, that you do that you've developed uh in terms of a kind of best practice processes that you do when you're starting uh you know a new web design and, and i guess we could say new layout design because you and your team are responsible for all the gorgeous layouts that that come bundled with divi so yeah maybe give us some insights on that before you dive in kenny actually a couple folks in the chat have mentioned your volumes a little low if you can yeah, maybe turn, turn your gain up. Oh, okay. Turn my gain Thanks. Is a little bit. Hopefully that's better for okay. everybody. Okay, guys, let us know if it's better. Sounds I can hear you just fine. So hopefully yeah. that'll be good for the for okay. the peoples. If anything, I'll start yelling. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I think that with design process, so much comes from like your experience, right? And so um, depending on how much you kind of look at the world for design inspiration or you look at popular blogs and um, design uh, resources, you know, sometimes that can depend or that can lead to a project that is really quick or something that takes quite a long time. And so my background comes more from kind of the advertising side where uh, you're spending a lot of time doing a ton of um, research and the goal is to kind of be able to sell some someone on something very quickly, right, with a, a quick glance. And so my background is kind of in advertising and branding. And so whenever I do any kind of design, my, my goal is to kind of brand the experience. And what I mean by that is when you're looking at a lot of web design out there these days, a lot of stuff starts to look a little bit similar and, and there's pros to con and pros and cons to that, I think. And we can maybe dive into that a little bit later, but um, one way to kind of get past that is to like really think about like, if we're talking about client work, um, you know, web freelance, like probably what a lot of um, our um, viewers are are doing is that you want to create a brand, right, for your clients. And um, they may have a brand um, and you have to kind of figure out how to bring that brand into the design. And so the first thing that I like to think of is I'm not thinking about content, I'm not thinking about um, layout. I'm really thinking about the brand and how that could potentially influence a unique um, layout or a unique um, way to display the content. So um, right now we're talking strictly about visual design and um, how that can influence user experience versus the other way around. Um, and then we can kind of jump into kind of more product design, which is like, you know, designing something like Divi or designing something like a plugin for Divi. So specifically yeah. when we're talking about layout packs, that's an interesting um, problem and project for us, right? Because it's, designing a website basically with no client, um, no real content um, <laughs> in a very short amount of time. Um, and we're also Listen, we to... all design sites without content all the time, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But you know, you know who the site is for, right? And so, yeah. uh, you know, we're not, we don't have like a, company logo to work with. We don't have a company set of colors to work with. We don't have any kind of like, we, we have literally nothing, <laughs> right? And so what we're trying to do is, let's say we design a pack for industry A, hopefully that pack can also work for industry A1, A2, A3, A4, right? And so 
ask when we get feedback a lot <laughs> from our layout packs that like, oh, well, this did you guys even research the topic before you did it? <laughs> You know, no. and it's like, well, <laughs> yes and no, right? We do it in a way where if we made the pack so specific, yeah. then that pack could never be used for other things. In which case, every Divi website built for a lawyer might look too much the same. So the goal there is to actually create layout packs that are more geared towards categories, right? So if you think about okay, a law firm, I'll keep going back to that topic, you know, okay, you're in like a business category at the highest level. But then at like a lower level, you're kind of in like a more serious business, something where there's like legalities, and you're trying to like, let your viewers know that you are serious and trustworthy, right? So we kind of end up in this like subcategory of like trustworthy business, right? Like professional trustworthy business. And so we try to like think about a brand, colors, typography, general content for something that's going to work for all businesses that fall into that larger category. From there, okay, sure, we're going to try to come up with general pages and some content that makes sense for a law firm. But we're not going to spend a week trying to come up with content for a law firm, right? right. That does That doesn't really help anyone except maybe a law firm building a website on Divi, right? And so, sure, that's great, but I don't think that, like, if we follow our mission of, like, empowering people, we don't want someone to just be completely locked into a layout, right? We want people to start with the layout as a, as a base. But for those who do want to just kind of use a layout out of the box, we want it to be good enough to do that as well. So um, we end up with this challenge of, like, the limit of content and and um, the limitation of Divi, right? And we all know what I mean when I say like the limitations of Divi, right? There's no hiding that. And so we don't use any custom CSS. We don't use any plugins. We don't use any custom JavaScript, no extensions, no child themes, nothing. It is all out of the box Divi. Um, and we do that because if we don't do that, everything's going to break, right? Depending on who uses that layout. Um, and when we do updates to Divi or um, anything like that. So the goal really is to uh, create basically a framework, right, for a, a website. And it's kind of weird to think about that. It's like a framework on a framework. But um, that's what makes those projects really unique. Like no one else has that unique uh, problem to solve, which is like creating um, really, really broad templates, unless you're creating plugins and stuff and extensions for Divi, like what Tim might be doing with, you know, creating, you know, pop-up or overlay templates or, um, you know, yeah, bar or even templates child and things themes like and... that. Child themes, yeah. exactly. But even like, I think that people expect from a child theme, sometimes to be pretty specific, depending on what the child theme is, right? Um, so for us, the way we kind of approach that is my team, um, one one person works on a layout pack. So um, I'm usually art directing it and um, helping them put together just a general brief where we're talking about very basic stuff from a design perspective, whether or not that's color or layout, you know, what other sites are you going to be inspired by from a content or design perspective? And what are some visuals out there that you're going to be inspired by, whether or not those are other websites, um, magazine layouts, movie posters, like whatever, right? There's like, like a million different places you can find design inspiration. And so once we do that, we jump into like, let's just design like one page, right? Like a landing page or even like a couple sections of a landing page. And really what I'm looking there for there is I'm not really critiquing on layout. I'm not really critiquing on um, content there. I'm really critiquing on how have you decided to brand this layout pack? What are the design elements? What are What is basically everything outside of content and layout that you're playing with? Um, and then once those things have been decided, it's like, okay, commit to that and create layout with relatively final content. Um, and then from there, we'll go through a couple rounds on a landing page and then kind of like have that, um, disperse out into some of the smaller pages, whether or not that's like a contact page and or about page. And really like when you look at real websites out there, people's contact pages, about pages, they're pretty simple. They're not really yeah. that heavily branded. They don't need to be. Um, but what we'll try to do is try to bring that brand into those pages as much as possible, just so it does look like a cohesive website. 
Um, but there are times where in our layout packs, those pages are very, very simple, maybe too simple. And there are some times where it's like, maybe they're a little bit over the top, right? And we're really just trying to give people <laughs> some variety. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And almost, I, I have a... Um, a well, I, I find a lot of the layout packs, what they're doing in a lot of ways is helping people imagine possibility. Like even if they're not going to use exactly what's in the layout pack, some of it is about being able to see what could Divi do. Like even if you weren't going to use a layout pack, you can kind of see an element and you can go, oh, that's like a really cool way of doing that thing. And then you could download the layout pack purely for like one portion of like one page where they've just done one bit of layout that you go, well, I could like completely change the image and put that into my colors and do all my things but it's like it can just spark well if they were able to do this with no css and no extra plugins then i can definitely bring that part into my website which i think is like right yeah it's very rare that we would use a whole layout pack but there's yep. bits right. of it that you go oh it sparks my imagination to what could yeah. be yeah, yeah we, we can talk about i think they are yeah. over the top sometimes but that's not a bad thing because it's really like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. sparking your imagination. Yeah. Now, one thing on that subject of kind of using layout packs as a starting point, one thing that I've seen out there in the wild, as well as not just with the Elegant Themes layout packs, but with my own products too, when customers are using it as a starting point and they start customizing it and they kind of start to venture away from that branding that you and your team, Kenny, uh, you know, kind of set forth is some things start to fall apart. So for example, it's like, okay, you have a, we'll, we'll stick to your, your law firm example. You have a law firm, you know, you have colors, you have images and everything. Everything is very cohesive and well-branded. And then the user starts changing things and now they're changing some content and those like perfectly branded images now don't really match the color scheme. So what I'd love to hear Kenny is from your perspective as a designer, as well as the, the one doing the art direction for these layouts is what's the best way to overcome that to where you can start customizing and changing things and have it not completely fall apart from a design perspective, especially when it comes to maybe more amateur designers that don't know some of those core design principles. Does that question I make thought sense? you were going to ask him when you see your layout packs out in the wild and people have changed them, how much does it hurt your soul? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say, <laughs> well, I'll start with Sarah's comment. And it actually hurts my soul more <laughs> when uh, people don't change it, right? The goal, is, yeah. the goal oh. is for people to change it. So, um, But to, to talk to this point, so, a huge problem when you're talking about templates right and if you think about divi in general like we had to have that kind of thinking in mind from the very beginning is what if the user does anything <laughs> right <laughs> and so uh with our layout packs we do think about um those things and especially when we're trying to figure out how to build some of these more complex layouts with just out of the box options and so sometimes a designer on my team will design something and say, well, what does that look like if you put in a super tall image? What does that look like if you delete the image? What happens if, um, you know, you start moving these things around, um, right? It's like really easy in Divi to just flip a column from the left and the right, or really easy to delete an image. And so what happens, like if you have a ton of like negative margin on something and then you delete something next to it, things break, right? And so yeah. a lot of times we're, we're pretty heavily testing that stuff because you know, we are creating a builder <laughs> where you can move around things on the front end and it's like really easy to break that stuff. And then it's hard to select things. It's hard to figure out how to move, you know, just get into options in Divi. And so that's, that's the first thing, right? Not talking too much about visual design, more about like, how can you just break the layout and how can we help people prevent, or how can we prevent people from accidentally breaking those things? So we are, we are just testing those things by just saying like, always test this chunk of text with one sentence, five sentences and 2000 words, see what happens, right? Yeah. Um, if we're talking about, you know, images that have to be perfectly selected, you know, you're never going to be able to solve that. <laughs> um, the only way you can solve that is when I think back to like my branding days is you would create a guideline for that kind of thing, right? You would say, hey, in this section, you know, you're always going to want to choose a photo that's in general light or in general dark or in, in general effect ratio. Um, if you're talking about an image that has to like absolutely fade into a solid color so that the design, you know, is like this like beautiful seamless experience, you know, you create 
um, design templates for people and say, hey, whenever you add an image here or change this image, you actually have to use the Photoshop file or whatever you know design tool you're using to actually replace the smart object. And it's going to apply all these effects and overlays and then you're gonna export it and use that image here, right? And so that's tough, that's a lot of work. Um, but we're talking about we're talking about design here, right? Design is not easy and um, it's really easy to mess up. And so I think it's okay that if you're creating tools for your clients or for your users, give them the benefit of the doubt, right? That they can figure this stuff out. And if they can't, worst case scenario, right? It's not that bad. Yeah. Uh, when you don't create those tools for your user, you're basically setting them up for failure. Yeah. And do you always, Kenny, do you always um, design desktop, tablet, mobile, or do you ever think actually we're going to do mobile first this time on this, on this particular design, or is it always the desktop first? That's a great um, question. The way, that, the way that we handle it is in my opinion, designing for mobile first is, um, in my opinion, lazy. Um, I think that it is a cop out and I think it's a great way to make a very accessible, beautiful design, but, um, going from mobile to desktop, you're always going to end up with a pretty lame desktop experience. Um, <laughs> and at the end of the day, Whoa. You guys, did you did everybody just hear what happened right now? Like unpopular opinion of Can the day. Sing, drop the Boom. I feel like I'm so validated right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean I'm gonna ruffle some feathers with that. But what's gonna happen is you're gonna get up to desktop experience and you're gonna be like, Man, I have to do a lot of work right now to make this a really mm -hmm. nice desktop experience, right? And yeah. so yeah. um in my opinion, it's much easier to go from desktop. Um and spend the right amount of time. Like imagine like showing your client an only of a phone experience and having them say like, okay, yeah. you got free reign to do desktop. No way. <laughs> right. You know, um, instead of ruffling feathers, you have made some friends. Look at this. <laughs> We've got Kyle Zinger. Yes. Mobile versus lazy with like a celebratory set of emojis. I agree. Design for desktop first, then mobile from Ray Katz, uh, Kyle Zinger in all caps, validation. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, and I, and I think that, you know, mobile first is something that uh, kind of came from the app design world um, where yeah. it was like, okay, mobile apps, mobile apps are great. They're really usable. I want my website to be a mobile app. And there was that time when you create like a mobile and a desktop version of your site. And it was like, okay, well, people are only accessing your website on mobile. You need to do first, right? And so... And it, it, yeah, sure. I think that mobile first and desktop, I really don't even like those words. I think experiences and uh, you should give them both the love they deserve. Um, but, you know, if you are don't have the time to do that, right? Start with desktop, make a beautiful experience, brand it, create some amazing layouts, figure out how that goes down to mobile, right? And so with Divi, that's tough right now, right? And we can talk a little bit about the future of Divi and how that's going to be improved. Um, but with uh, going going from desktop to mobile, um, we know what Divi's capabilities are in terms of mobile design. So when we design for a desktop, and if you have a lot of experience as a designer, you're designing with what's going to happen, right? You're gonna, you're you're thinking about how this is going to work on mobile, right? If you design a three column layout. You're never going to have a two by two layout on mobile. It's impossible. <laughs> the right. math doesn't add up, right? And so you have to think about, well, is this going to look better if I have a four column layout? Or, you know, what's going to happen if, um, you know, this image actually gets bigger on mobile? How's that going to work, right? And so I really encourage my designers to, when I, when I give feedback and comments on the desktop version, half of my comments are, What's this going to look like on mobile? How do you expect this to work on mobile? And if they can answer that in a sentence, great, right? All I want to do is make sure that they're thinking about it. Um, and so sometimes we get questions or I get questions of like, hey, how do you suggest we build this in Divi, right? Like this kind of column or this kind of row. And I say, well, it actually depends on how you want it to look on mobile. And so um, definitely not a mobile first approach. Um, I don't think anyone will ever convince me that that's how I should be designing. Yeah. Do your that's great. designers design in DB or do they design in like a design app? 
Really, I, I give them the choice. Um, we're most of them are we're, we're designing in design apps. Yeah, I mean, Divi is a great tool to be designing in if you're like a savant and like know, like know exactly what you want it to look like, right? But like, I wouldn't. I would say yeah. Divi is quick to be building in, but it's not a great way to start creating like branding elements and design elements and be yeah. editing photos, right? Like, in my opinion, again, like for people that were here at the very beginning of the conversation, I approach design as a branding project and like these builders are never going to help you do that uh, in a very unique way. Right. So um, yeah, we design in um, either sketch or Figma. I'm personally a Figma user um, these days um, and any kind of design elements or icons or illustration that's all still being done in Adobe products um, and brought into um, Figma and Sketch as linked live files. There's lots of cool tools for doing that. And then we um, kind of finalize design and then whatever assets you use in your design process uh, or tool, whatever you're, like tool you're using for um, adding in photos, a lot of times you wanna be adding in like the low res version of those photos or you know, you're really only thinking about that, that asset on desktop or whatever breakpoint you're designing for at that time. And then when you export those assets, you have to think about, okay, well, what is the resolution of this image and how's it going to on all devices and stuff. So we actually then take the time to set up all of our assets outside of our design and tools to make sure that things are being exported at, you know, generally small. Okay, we want this to look really good. Sometimes we need a, a big, heavy You just dropped out for me. Was that just me? No. no. Oh, okay, can out. you say that last sentence again? Because I really <laughs> want to hear what you said. You said we export that as... <gasps> I need to know what you're going to say. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we export that to make sure that it's going to look good on, on all breakpoints, right? And um, yeah. we want those assets to be pretty light, as, as light as possible. Um, but sometimes you really do need an image that's going to look amazing. And it, it does require, you know, something that's 100 to 300 KB and... Um, we'll throw those in there and in my opinion, it's, it's worth it. Right. And, um, yeah. you don't want your website looking bad. I, I think that there's a, there's a balance you have to strike between a website that loads a couple milliseconds slower and looks like crap. One that people wait a blink longer and it, it really is a nice experience. Yeah. Hey, I think we uh, have a cup, a couple questions kind of coming in here. One, um, I just want to just say, we're not talking about Divi performance today. Um, two, <laughs> um, <laughs> Shut down. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> we talked Andy's about like, it um, with episode 200 sorry. with Nick, so we don't need to go back and do it again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There is a uh, question here. Or sorry, go, go ahead, ahead, Kenny. No, you go ahead. I was going to say Patrick's question there. Uh, Stephanie, do you mind putting that up? Patrick uh, as soon as Corky. I find it. Yep. Are there no, so are there no yep. statistics showing more people view the web on mobile compared to desktop? So overall, yes, that's true. More people view the web on mobile than desktop across the board. It depends obviously in your niche and your your audience and stuff. And just to be clear, and Kenny can reiterate, but he's no one here is saying to not put emphasis on mobile. It's just we're saying, and Kenny's point here is that uh, don't do mobile first because it's a lot harder to go from mobile to desktop. It's easier to go from desktop to mobile yeah, and give both of them equal uh, priority, but you know, one is not necessarily better than the other. So I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that. I just want to make that clear that Kitty's not saying mobile doesn't matter because it absolutely right. matters. Yeah, I mean, we, mobile mobile first is, is a, uh, I don't know. If it makes you feel better to design mobile first, I guess do it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's like, it, it's more of like and, right? It's, a, it's an and, it's not an or. Yeah, it's way easier to take things away than to add things on once you've established what you're trying to do. Yeah, and when you think about development as well, right? Like, are you gonna d develop the mobile version first? Maybe, I, I don't know if that's the best idea. Uh, yeah. yeah. Kenny, absolutely. you talked about um, some tools that you use. Um, I've, I've mm. seen in sort of um, previous sort of podcasts you've done, where you always talk about working smarter, not harder. Do you have like a go-to set of tools that you use sort of every day, you're, you're in them all the time? Ooh, that's a long conversation, Mike. Um, Is it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess what I'll say. Listen, we have 27 minutes. We got 27 <laughs> minutes. Go for it, buddy. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, what I tell everybody is to absolutely master your tools. Um, and if that's one tool, master it. If it's five, master all five. Um, there's, there's no way you're going to be the most efficient builder or designer that you can be without mastering your tools, whether or not that's learning literally everything that a tool can do, um, having and knowing every shortcut for every single one of those tools. Um, efficiency is pretty key, right? I like to try to think yeah. that like every second of the day, someone is actually watching me work and I don't want to be embarrassed about that. And so wow. my tools are um, pretty efficient. I mean, I set up all my own custom uh, shortcuts and all of my tools, but the tools that I am using are Photoshop, Illustrator, Sketch, and Figma, and Divi, obviously. Um, <laughs> and so I'm using Sketch. <laughs> As an afterthought, days. he says. <laughs> yeah. um, Divi is one of those things. I had a conversation with Tim on his podcast about efficiency in Divi. Um, if you want to go check out that. And there's so many efficiency tools in Divi that people actually don't know about. So um, maybe that's another conversation for another day. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I use Sketch for designing websites these days versus Photoshop, which would be like back in the day. Did um, you ever try Adobe XD? Figma. Yeah, I would, I would say that that is uh, not in my talk, but uh, or X is only a tool to consider if they're, um, you know, uh, kind of like stuck or not stuck, but like in the Adobe you know, ecosystem, uh, XD is a great tool and arguably better than sketch now. Um, but yeah, I don't, I can't speak to it. Um, I've only prototyped in it a little bit. Um, and I know that they do a really good job in, in that respect, but, um, I'm using Figma for product design, I don't have too much product design today, but, um, using Figma for product design, their efficiency and speed and, it's gorgeous. I I'll talk all day about Figma, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm mainly I'm mainly in Sketch with my design team. That's awesome. So I want to make sure we leave some time to talk about some of the upcoming features. <laughs> no, we're going to leave that Tim till the end. We've run out of time. <laughs> I'm going to cut yeah, it off. Definitely don't want to do that. But I do want to take an opportunity to say if you are joining us now for the first time or the fifth time and you're not a subscriber yet of Divi Chat, uh, we definitely would love it if you subscribed and gave us a thumbs up. Uh, you can also rate the podcast on rate rate this podcast.com slash Divi Chat. Is that it, Steph? Yeah, nice job. Yeah, there we go. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead. Uh, so there's some questions here before we jump into the Divi stuff. Steph, I don't know if you want to just pull out a few of the, yeah. the ones that are kind of a little more relevant. Some of them are kind of out of left field. I like this mention. question here from Freeman S. Can we talk about suggested breakpoint sizes? What do you? Uh, what's your take on this, Kenny? Oh, well, this has become an impossible question over the last few years. That's why I picked five it. Five years. <laughs> um, and the way to... So the way to think about this is um, if you can figure out who your target audience is and what they're using, you can make an educated decision on this. If you don't, you can't. Um, and so what you want to do is just make sure that your website literally works on every single breakpoint. Um, and Divi does have some limitations here, right? We have some built-in breakpoints and we only have a few. Um, the future of Divi takes what we have now far beyond that um you know again i'm not promising any features here but in terms of thinking it does get into the realm of adding your own custom breakpoints or saying that you know this option um has a tablet value for a tablet breakpoint that is x versus this ele other element right next to it has a tablet value based on this media query and so you know, some sections are going to respond differently on tablet than literally the section below it. And so, yeah, that's um, like the three column thing that you're talking about. Like it may be yeah. that it could go side by side in three columns all the way down to mobile. I mean, maybe not, but you know, like it might be yeah. able to being able the to say, you know, this stays side by side. That'd be cool. Yeah. I mean, the better, the better example there is you might have two on top of each other. They're both four column and this so it, you know, you can't just say that, hey, Boston. this website is great because on tablet, all of my four columns go to two columns on tablet. That is not 
the best way to be yeah. thinking about responsive design. Right? The best way to be thinking about breakpoint is that every single pixel from about 300 pixels to 3,000 pixels looks great. Yep. That's tough. It's nearly impossible. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> It is I do want to say that there is a way to add custom breakpoints to your website. It's called custom CSS media queries. It's not <laughs> the people want to hear, uh -uh. <laughs> but you can literally make changes to you know just a small fraction of the of the viewport. You know, different sizes of devices if you want. Uh, obviously, uh, doing every single device separately isn't a, a good way to to build a website but you can if you want that exists in css um but yeah uh any any other questions stephanie that are relevant here that we can throw up before moving on to the the juicy uh yeah sure we got a couple gossip. well you got a couple <laughs> image questions mira wants to know how you choose your hero image sizes and related to this, he says he's seen two like different sizes in the templates. So that's kind yeah. of relevant. And then right on top of that, uh, Freeman also asks a related question about a blog post of recommended image sizes. And there is a post on the Elegant Themes blog that talks about for each how, how big each column is and all of that. And my advice on that part is always design it for basically 1080 because that's when it goes down to mo like when it goes down to one column that's what you got right is that what you do uh the, again loaded question great question uh the reason why you're seeing different sizes is because we're because every image is different right sometimes your image is um an illustration base or it has only a few colors and you can actually really really optimize a 3000 pixel image uh, down to something that is actually smaller than uh, a, a super heavy, noisy photo that's you know only 1,000 pixels wide. So what we're doing is we're trying to find a balance between uh, visual quality and file size. And so again, there's no perfect answer there. It's really kind of a back and forth. You know, we'll throw an image in at maybe we'll start with like a default of 1920, um, which is kind of like about a, what people kind of have their browsers at on a big screen and just see what it looks like, right? If that's getting super blurry, well, we might have to use a larger larger resolution. If that's taking an image up to 300, 400, 500 KB, maybe that's not worth it, right? So we're never, I'm never gonna tell my designers, hey, always use a 2000 pixel image in your hero. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Um, uh, anybody so else have anything they saw in here? Um, in the... Yeah, we're we're getting a lot of activity. So thanks for everyone for tuning in live and asking questions, making comments. We absolutely love it. We do. Again, this give is, us a thumbs up a on the video if you're enjoying this. Oh, yeah. Please do. Nancy um, has a question that might lead into some of the future facing things that you're going to talk about with Divi specifically. Oops, I clicked on the wrong one. It jumped away from me. Nancy asks, what, what uh, design... What are you seeing in the future of web design in the industry, basically, I think is what she's asking, which is an interesting question. I'd love to hear your perspective on that, Kenny. Uh, mobile first design. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> Big change. Uh, well, the, the, the future of web design, you know, for me is, is not the future of web design. It's the future of um, it's the future of business. It's the future of online presence. And so whatever your your audience is asking for, give it to them, right? And and what we've seen over the past 10 years in terms of web design is just constantly giving users more of what they want, um, more of what they couldn't have with old technologies. So really what people are gonna be doing is just constantly be allowing you to do more things on your website without it being super slow. So we saw a huge phase in web design where things got super, super like cool, but really slow, right? And then devices came along and all of those sites weren't slow, they just broke. Um, so then we saw another huge phase where everyone started to pull back and do super simple websites that worked on all the devices. They didn't care what it looked like. They just wanted to make sure that it worked, right? Now it pretty much works. Um, and so the, the goal to answer some of these other questions here is to make all that work and have it be fast. Right. So yeah. I think the future of web design is really kind of getting back to what some of these really cool old websites looked like and were able to do, but on every device. Um, and that's what all these browsers are trying to allow people to do, whether or not that's, you know, grid CSS, flex, um, 
you know, AMP, like, I mean, just so much, right? It, it's in it, those, those answers are endless. And so um, in the near future, like in the next five years, I think it's really just going to be trying to get people out of this like mindset that every website looks the same um, and getting people back again to that idea of like actually creating branded, awesome experiences on the web that work on every device. Great answer. Love it. Love it. Yep. Okay, so uh, we had Nick Roach on episode 200 a couple weeks ago. And uh, for those of you who weren't here, Nick started talking about some upcoming features. And uh, we ran out of time. And so he didn't get to some of the I good cut him stuff. off. Okay. Do we want to talk? Do you want to say it? I, <laughs> I, I wasn't going to throw like, Stephanie under the bus. Don't, don't Listen, Nick, I got to go. I got stuff to do. <laughs> You're yeah, done. Actually, the reason why, to <laughs> Stephanie's defense, is Nick, when he agreed to come on, he said yes, as long as it doesn't go over an hour, um, <laughs> which is understandable. He's very busy, and we could ask him questions all day long. So we were trying to be respectful of his time, and so we just cut him <laughs> off a little too soon. <laughs> so I said, so, like, time's up. We're done. I was trying to be so good. And then after it, I keep getting people being like, why'd you cut him off so early? Why would you, why would you let him keep talking? <laughs> Kenny says, oh, you missed all the good stuff. I'm like, <laughs> so Kenny, what can you tell us? I know you can't, you know, promise any features and you know, you said you you might need to be, you know, vague and more kind of philosophical in some areas, but what can you tell us in terms of what's coming in the future of Divi? Yeah, so just to kind of summarize where Nick kind of left off um a few weeks ago, uh, Nick's kind of talking about some of the 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 features that are coming, right? Things that we've been working on. When we think about that. Those are features that we've been thinking about for years. Um, whether or not they've been things that people have asked, been asking for, or things we know that obviously need to be done in Divi. Um, but they've, you know, they take a long time to develop. So it's like buying, you know, a brand new car and it already feels old because it was probably designed two years ago, right? It's always going to be like that with a product as big as Divi, with a following as big as Divi. Um, and so we're constantly fighting this battle of, you know, competing with our with our competitors. Um, and seeing how fast they're moving. If you really look at the last year of page builders, no one is like speeding through features anymore, right? Because um, they've kind of like all, for lack of a better term, caught up to Divi, surpassed Divi in a lot of ways. And it's like, well, now what? And I think that everybody's kind of like in this, um, I think Elementor has kind of finally gotten to a place where Divi is where it's like, oh my gosh, a ton of customer support now. Um, a ton of websites, we can't make as agile changes as we used to be able to do, right? You have products like, um, you know, Oxygen and Bricks, things like that are just coming up that are like, we're very, very light, right? But they don't have the market share. They're able to be pretty agile, um, but they are amazing products, right? They are, they are amazing products. And I, I'm, I will be the first person to say that those products are great and they're pushing us to, to be great as well. And so if we look at when Divi gained popularity, none of these people were even in the race, right? They weren't even on the same planet. And so we have to, when I came back uh, to Elegant Themes a few years ago, you know, it was under the condition that, I, that we were going to be able to get out of this idea that we're stuck, right? And so it is my job to unstick us <laughs> right from this like <laughs> 2015 version of Divi how do we do that well you know okay well a lot of people just say well just listen to us these are the features you guys need okay well it's like a kid in the car saying are we there yet right it's like yeah we there's no good answer right the answer is we're not there yet <laughs> and so but I want to be there as the parent in the driver's seat like I want to be there just as much as you and the reason why I'm not asking the question is because I'm a little bit more aware of the, of, the, of my surroundings and and what it is, right? And so, when we're um, you know developing for Divi and we're designing for Divi, we know what people want and we know um, what is going to make Divi a better experience. But we also just like can't snap our fingers and we can't create um, just a quick you know duct tape fix. We we really like the way that I like to talk about features is. is yeah, sure, we could add that. But is that really the most holistic way to think about adding that feature, right? Is that feature actually part of a larger change that needs to happen in Divi? And does that require quite a, quite a big change, right? Like all the way down to like a refactoring situation. So um, where we are right now is we're like a little stuck, 
And what I mean by stuck is um, we can't uh, get to where we need to go without backstepping a little bit. And the problem with being able, we're like, we're not able to backstep, right? It's like, we're, we're so big, we're in the public eye, so many millions of sites, so many millions of users that if we just said, hey, everybody, we're taking some time off to backstep, <laughs> we, we can't, we can't do it, right? And, and yeah. the, the fact of the matter is, is we've been doing it slowly kind of behind closed doors, right? And Nick did like some big announcements about performance in the last month or Great so time. that nobody knew we were doing that stuff or have been doing that stuff because it's not sexy. It's not like people want it, but we can't just say, Hey, this is going to take two years. Right. No one really reacts well to something like that. Right. <laughs> and so no one really reacts well if we said, Hey, it's going to take two months. So, um, what, what I kind of proposed in the past year or so is that we have to basically redesign Divi. Right. And, uh, design is go like over a, in the staff meeting it was a big it, you know not everybody knows how <laughs> like our design team works but it was it was big it was big for me it was something that i kind of worked on um kind of on the side for a really long time and it was it's one of those things i mean i've worked at enough companies to know like how pitches like that go um and it's tough because you have developers in the room that say that's impossible you have leaders in the room that say, we don't have time for it. We have, you know, you have like all of these factors that you have to think about um, when you're just a designer saying, hey, make it look like this, make it work like this, right? So yeah. um, the only way that I found that made sense to do it was to, to propose Divi as a full redesign um, so that everybody could see the benefits of what an actual full redesign would look like, right? And how do we look at all of our competitors? How do we look at all the comments that our competitors are getting, all the comments that we're getting, all of the new young products coming up and saying like, look, we do this better than Divi, right? Like, how do we like remedy all of those things? And um, we can't, again, we can't just keep adding features because a UI is built for a certain amount of features. And when you reach the limits of that, you eventually can't fit any more people in the boat before it sinks. And so it's, uh, you know, you need, you just need to build, <laughs> build a big boat. And so, um, we're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> yeah. You just, you can't just say like, we'll just add another seat in the boat. Right. Eventually you just get too crowded and that's both philosophical and like legitimately you just can't fit things on the page. Right. And so, um, Divi was built so many years ago with a certain set of features in mind and it worked and it worked and it still works. It's great. Um, but we are absolutely at max capacity, right? And that's uh, coming from both a UI perspective, a performance perspective. Um, and when you think about a developer team that's grown as fast as our team has, right? Like think about just code debt and um, just not being able to change anybody's website if we change one little thing. So the proposal is basically, uh, you know, a complete improved UI that can handle all of these things that we want, all of these things that people want, and to, um, you know, think about uh, how how do we look at other tools that look at look at Adobe for example, right? Like you want to to change the opacity of an image, you have to open up Photoshop and see like the Swiss Army knife that Photoshop is, right? Divi needs to be that. Um, but we also need to allow you to just change the opacity of an image, right? And so it's this balance of like, how do you add every single thing possible um, and let those things be invisible until they need to be brought to the surface? And that's yeah. a really, yeah. really hard thing to do um, with an existing UI, <laughs> right? So um, sure. Something I've always said is Divi is powerful enough for professionals, but easy enough for beginners. And so what you're kind of saying is speaking to that, where it's like, how do you design for both? The beginner that just wants to change the opacity really easily. And then the professional that wants to, you know, fully add all of these, you know, different filters and, you know, whatever. So it's like yeah. from a UI standpoint, that's a that's a tall order. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and one thing to mention here is that Divi is what it is because of you know, you all. So where we look, where we see, you know, Divi moving forward is like, um, 
built on extensions, built on third parties. And right now, um, again, we didn't build Divi one through four with that in mind, really. Um, and so the future of Divi will be built with third parties in mind. And, you know, the API is going to get better. The integrations are going to get better as well as a way to actually put your product into the visual builder that is Divi in an elegant way without feeling like you're trying to like just scream and yell louder than the other extension on the page. <laughs> and so that's another thing that we're really taking under consideration. You know, it's like, how does, you know, something as popular like Yoast, for example, like ex exist in Divi or how does something like, you know, Tim's plugins exist in, in the front end of Divi without having to be like, well, where do I go to actually edit that stuff? Or where do I go to actually configure that stuff? Um, because right now there's just no spot for that in current Divi. It doesn't, you know, there's no, there's nowhere that really makes sense for that. So, um, one is, you know, just an, an improved UI of like the builder kind of like what I like to call just like the shell, right? Um, how, how certain interactions work, like how, you know, can you have, you know, one modal open, like the layers modal versus like 10 modals open. I don't know whether or not that's like your portability modal, your layers modal, your, um, maybe like a global, you know, styles modal, your custom code modal. Like right now you can only have like one of those open at a time. Uh, but that's not really how we work, right? We work in different ways and how can you configure those things for a 27 inch monitor versus a 11 inch yes. laptop? Um, yeah, I think our way around that at the moment is having like multiple tabs <laughs> open, like you've got your DV options open and then you've yeah. got like the page you're working on open and then you're just going from one yeah. to another. Like that's a cool way to think. Yeah. So it's like, how do we try to create an improved UI that works for any kind of builder? Um, you know, whether or not it's someone that's a little bit more, you know, code savvy or someone that's more like design thinker, both. Um, and so it's, uh, again, it's one of those things where it's like, how do you design for everyone and nobody at the same time? And so it really requires thinking about how is the interface customizable, um, without having it be hard to customize. <laughs> so right. it's, uh, it's definitely something that I'm passionate about solving. And, and I think, you know, we have some really cool stuff that we're working on that I think is going to be really great. And. Um, it kind of gets into like, okay, well then how do you find all these options, right? And so um, building better ways to have uh, those options to be more accessible and discoverable. And a lot of that comes from education, right? Like understanding what are the options in Divi? What is even possible, right? Whenever I tell people when they're learning something new is you just need to know what is possible. You need, there's two things. You need to know what's possible and you need to know what not to do. <laughs> yeah, that's until awesome. You, until you know those things, you don't know what to do. Um, so the, uh, the next thing we wanted to talk about, you know, is like kind of what we've been talking about in this conversation is how do we give more people or sorry, people more options for responsive and interactions, um, on their website, right. To so take their website into the future, um, and allow people to do what they need to do on their website. And right now, yeah, Divi has its limitations, but, um, it, it is great and it can be better. And so working on just more ways to, um, again, if you want to design mobile first, right. Or to design, uh, mobile in general. So just, uh, extended functionality there. Um, and then the big one is more access to global styling, right? We've someone in the comments just now said like, Hey, what is one of your favorite, um, options in the past year that, that's been released? And, um, I don't know if I'm going back past 12 months. Time is kind of a weird lately, but um, you know, it's going to be the global stuff. It's going to be global presets. It's going to be global colors, right? And th the reason why is that is taking Divi outside of this initial um, kind of Divi one, two, and three approach, where it's like, how do you just like create all these micro design choices on the page? To how do you, you know, kind of go back out to the theme level? You know, people forget that Divi is both a theme and a builder, right? And so we have the power to build what happens if you builder at the theme level in a very seamless other builders the, the benefit of. And so what I really want to do is kind of like make Divi not feel like it's two different products, whether or not, you know, like the theme and the builder, how is it just like one framework, you know, access theme level stuff, page level stuff, 
um, all in the same place and have it feel really, really seamless. And so, you know, when we talk global stuff, we're really talking about that, right? We're talking about fonts, typography, color, presets, global things. And right now those things are kind of like hard to wrap your head around in Divi because um, the idea of those things has also been evolving in web design, right? Um, like how templatized web design has become and how variables have made their way into web design. And it didn't always used to be like that. It was like, okay, create like the best CSS you can and then like try to clean it up later. Um, and now it's like, you see these, the most beautiful, you know, frameworks and stuff for some of these styling, um, uh, styling frameworks. And, and I, I think that Divi has a way to bridge that gap, um, if we do it right. And, and, and we, again, we do have some really cool stuff there. So continued global styling efforts, um, a big one that, you know, we, we hear a lot and, um, I'm a designer, so I, I deal with it myself is great. You know, and so I designed, uh, sorry, know, is like what the, if I were to design the, yeah, we, it dropped a, a better little bit. Repeat that, Kenny. <laughs> a better grid work. Um, and so, you know, you, you know the, the column uh -oh. options in Divi and the, the, you know, the, the gutters and the wit, the, just the general like, layout options in Divi and it's pretty limited, right? Um, it's built on a block base, uh, kind of like very select creation, very, very weak flex integration. Um, but now that, I mean, in my opinion, flex is old now, right? The new stuff is going to be your grid CSS, but, um, in my opinion, uh, based on what I know about layout is that. Uh, grid and flex actually work really, really well together. And there's some things that no other builders are doing that I think that they should be doing. So we're trying to like think about the the best grid possible without giving people like the option to make their column, you know, 88.97% wide, <laughs> right? Like that's not really helping yeah. anybody. Um, so it's like, how, again, how do we find a balance to support every everyone uh, that is, um, you know, give them the options with, to do what they need to do without giving them too much power to break things. And so we still want Divi to be extremely modular so that you can just drag to and from anywhere, right? And if we make a grid that is too free, that actually you end up running into a bunch of stuff where you try to do things and it's like, that's actually not supported. You actually can't do that. And so, um, you know, really thinking about a new flexible grid for the future of web design. Um, again, we have some really cool stuff in the works there. Um, you awesome. know, we need to bring more, uh, just things that you can do in CSS, right. In, into Divi, right. That's always going to be a thing that we can improve on. So they're not like, well, why do I have to write like custom CSS for this? Where do I have to write a child theme for this? So, like in my head, and I've said this in past podcasts, there should be no reason to create a child theme for styling, right. That would be like the ultimate goal. Um, Interesting. So, so more, more options there. Um, but again, if we bring all those options into current Divi, it's going to just be confusing. So, uh, rethinking how the settings modal works, um, how the settings modal is organized, um, basic taxonomy and nomenclature. When we talk about like Divi documentation, um, you know, people call everything something different, you know, and it's, it really makes it hard to talk about the functionality functionality of Divi. So again, just trying to brand like what things are called throughout Divi, I think will help, right? When we think about like the idea of like a section versus a row, I don't know if you guys have used like other products out there, but those don't translate directly to other products, right? People call things different everywhere. Um, you know, whether or not there's a module, a widget, a column structure, a row, <laughs> you know, it, it's all, it's all very different. And so trying to help people trying to build a way to, that's a little bit more understandable, um, is a challenge that we're looking at. Um, then, uh, for, for me, it's like, uh, how do we, how do we you just click, <laughs> put it anywhere, like, which is something going to, like if you look at something like maybe Wix or like X or something like that, um, where it's like, okay, that looks good at this point, <laughs> right? And then you like change your breakpoint like a tiny bit. And it's like, depending on whether or not you've used percentages or M's or EW's or whatever, it's like, oh, whoa, 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 I didn't 
that's not what I thought it was going to do. Right. And so how do we bridge the gap between like complete canvas freedom, um, and something that can potentially go from desktop to phone or phone to desktop with very little effort and then allowing people to micro adjust from there. But really what it comes down to is how do we build a bigger boat? Boom. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you think about it, Divi is approaching the 10 year old mark, right? Launching in, in 2013, like we're, we're right, 10 years old. Divi is, is right around the corner. So essentially what I'm hearing is the boat and the foundation that you built from the beginning that you've kind of made these incremental additions to the boat for these first 10 years, you've now outgrown. And so now you need to build a bigger boat to support the next 10 years and, and beyond. So it's not just the future of Divi isn't just more features. It's just a better overall Divi experience. I mean, what it is, is it's allowing, I mean, you, we can't just keep adding more features again. We're, we're, we're at capacity. Right. Um, and so, I mean, I feel like you could make the logo pop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll just build a logo, <laughs> logo builder. Yes. <laughs> make or, just, it bigger. Or, or, or just have a button that is make the logo bigger and you just yeah. click yeah. it. Make the logo bigger. <laughs> make the logo bigger. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it really is, uh, it is fun to think about all these features, all the features we don't have, all the features we want. But um, you know, it is time to kind of like take a take a pause and figure out how do we um, add those features without killing Divi. Um, yeah, because that's kind of the uh, the inevitable kind of like cliff we're headed towards. And so, um, yeah, we want all the features. I want all the features, right? I use Divi too. Um, probably more than a lot of people in here. And so <laughs> it's, it's, I, I know, I know what you want. And I, um, I think that we forget it's not only, you know, people building websites, but it's also people like, you know, like on this panel are building things for Divi and eventually they even build for Divi because it's, you know, headed for the cliff. And so it's like, how do we, you know, create, um, basically what would we do if we started from scratch right like that's another way to just put it but but we can't just do that right like we we have to figure out a way to do it well we're not just like building a bigger boat and throwing away the small one right that smaller boat will always exist it's got to be there uh, yeah you've yeah. got to increase the size of the boat and not sink while you're doing yeah. it yeah. if we're going to keep it's going an interesting on this. one because like all these new guys in the game they get to start from scratch so mm. they get to start and learn from divi's benefit. like learn from things that divi's done yeah. yeah yeah so they get to see what divi's doing and see like how can we do that but how can we also do new stuff and they get to start at this point so they get that benefit but they equally don't have that same experience that you guys have gone through over the last 10 years of mm growing and changing and like you, you yep. guys have been through the hard yards in the process of growing and that's the stuff that those companies haven't been through that they're going to start to hit soon where suddenly they're at the point of like crap we're growing and we've got all these new people and now we've got all these people relying on us like one of the reasons a lot of us have stuck with Divi is because Divi is so reliable so other than the famous 2.4 update <laughs> like pretty much it, it, she had to go there she had to. yeah i know but like the the point with that is that is well known because it was the one time where it went really badly for a lot of us but for the most part all of the updates sure like every now and then you have to tweak a little bit and it's usually if you've done something custom and then it doesn't work with it but for the most part the reason we all stick with divi is partly that thing of you talking about like if you get to know your tools really well you get faster at it you get better at it you know the boundaries that you can work in you just create better websites at a quicker pace because you know it. So we stick with it for that reason. But we also stick with it because it's a company that understands it's supporting so many websites. And sure, like it's going slower, but equally, I think most of us other than the whingers, like most of us understand the fact that we don't want all our websites to break. Yes, we want the future, but we also <laughs> want our websites to 
we don't want to have to fully like fix everything along the way. And I think there's something about knowing there is a reliable company that isn't just going to disappear and is trying to go, okay, well, you know, the future looks like this. And sure, you guys can't see that. You just want these other features. We can see the future and we need to make some big changes, but we're doing it with you in mind. Like that's a company I work with. So like I feel re- really reassured that Divi is or Elegant Themes is working a way to make the future possible and yeah. doesn't mean that we have to jump ship to some other boat, yeah. um, but that we can know that it's coming and it's going to be okay. And sure, we can use third-party stuff to like bridge the gaps where yeah. Divi isn't quite there yet. But I think it's easy to look at these other builders and kind of go, oh, but they can do this like fancy other thing. But at some point they're going to hit the same hurdles and can you trust that they're going to um, have your back in that process? I think, yeah, I think there's a reason we have stuck with Tibby. And sure, we could have looked at, you know, Elementor or one of the other guys. And it's not that they're not good, but there is a reason that we stick with Tibby. And I think it's because of people like you and um, the core team of Elegant Themes that are thinking about us and the future and where we're all heading. And I feel really yeah. reassured by that. Yeah, as web designers and, and people that uh, work on computers where there's a lot of software out there, there is a lot of tools, it's very easy to get shiny object syndrome. And I see it because I've been in the yeah, Divi sure. community for since the beginning. And I see people that I used to see active starting to be active in other page builder Facebook groups because I'm in all of them just because I like to see what's going on. And it's like, and then I, I, I eventually see them come back to Divi because they get that shiny <laughs> object syndrome. And then they Just think, like Kenny, ooh, like, came back. this is really cool. And then they realize, <laughs> well, it was cool. However, the, the kind of the core page builder of Divi, you know, is still so much stronger than maybe, you know, these cool other features over here. And like, I want to reiterate what Sarah's saying. I would rather be with a company uh, that is, thinking ahead right and so the things that kenny's talking about like it basically goes to show that they're they're thinking 10 steps ahead there's not something that a customer can say like hey i want this and request this where elegant themes is going to be like oh we never thought of that it's like no they've thought about (laughs) it and it's on the list and it's you know like prioritized and everything and or they've already rejected that idea because they have something way better you know from like a more broad level, like Kenny talked about, yeah. uh, it, like the famous example of that one was when the the theme builder came out and the build, ability to do headers. Everyone's like, "How do I make a fixed header?" And there was a feature that came a couple months after, which was the ability to make anything sticky. So it wasn't just a checkbox to make your header f- fixed. It was like, "Hey, you can actually make anything on your page stick anywhere you want, not just your header." And so, like, those are the types of uh, I guess thinking uh, thought yeah, process that's that, a great that Kenny and the team go through is it's not just about one feature; it's about kind of the all you know holistic uh, way of yeah. the page builder. And I think what people have to understand as well is that it's a little bit like as a web designer when somebody comes to you with a website that they've had built, you know, five or six years ago, and you and you take your first look at it and you start looking around at the code. And Nick mentioned it in in our 200th episode as well and he said he'd gone back and looked at code that was written all the way back that he'd been involved in sort of 2011 and it was part and of i'm sure a lot of that know. was stuff that i wrote too you know <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> and, and people have to understand that you have to understand that you know when you're when you're revisiting something you're going back over everything you've done in order to go forward you have to go you have to go back you have to yeah. go and look at, at, at the the you know where it all came from and how it's got to this point so that you can sort of it's almost like a, a building an extension on a house with a another house going to be coming on the end of it and then you're going to demolish the old thing afterwards isn't it? it's really difficult to transition from yeah. where you are now to a new a new place and it takes a long time to do it yeah and That's you know awesome. people that haven't been around for 10 years don't know what the 89th theme of elegant themes look like you know it was just a theme <laughs> it was just a theme it was uh yeah. you know the a freemium theme i it was my first wordpress theme i had ever designed and i didn't really know what i was doing and my which next, one was it oh you probably uh, serene it was just a it was just a it was four i dot. probably knew it 
it was for dot uh, com it was for a free free um like repository theme um but oh okay. it was just i thought it was an elegant there. themes theme it was it was an elegant themes theme um but it was something oh. that we wanted to be as simple and wordpressy as possible to be able to have in the free repository and um the next thing are you googling it right now because no, i could I see was, the look on your face i was googling something else that i'll, I'll oh. show you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and and the next theme that we thought was just going to be just another theme in elegant themes uh was divi and it was like hey let's build something that like where you can do like a lot of stuff <laughs> <laughs> and right and it was like my it. my approach to that was like well how how can we make a theme that just obliterates all the other themes that have it was revolutionary released, you know? like it really and changed so, everything it blew yeah, my it mind when it came it was out. just supposed to be another theme and then extra was the next theme right and mm -hmm. so yeah. it you have to realize extra that, the red-headed stepchild of elegant <laughs> Okay. I I love extra. All right. I do too. But it was like, what? Can I just get them both, please? Like, yes, eventually, eventually, um, yeah. we'll get there. But yeah, I mean, Div, again, Divi wasn't like if you think about like how a new kid on the block, a new builder on the block, is thinking about their builder. That's not anywhere close to what we were thinking when we built Divi. Right. right. Yeah. It was such a smaller scope. Um, and so the fact that it has become what it is today and that it can actually support the UI that it has today and the options that it has today, in my mind, is a huge success. And like, I think we got lucky um, that it was able to support everything that it supports today. But, you know, it's time, time to kind of like call it what it is. And we have to, right, it's not going to be like, uh, you know, a 1.0 to a 2.0 to a 3.0 to a 4.0. It's like something bigger has to happen. And, and so I'm excited about that as a designer. It's not going to happen overnight, obviously. Um, but we are making strides towards it. And we do, we do have to think about all the millions of sites there that are already out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. which is, you know, it's, it's hard because, it's it's hard because ch code changes, right? It's like we all know that like even one yeah. little string can have a ripple effect that is like insanity. And so, um, when when you say something like, you know, we'll just refactor or some, you know, like where it's like legitimately like rewriting code, it's really scary and it takes a long time and it takes a lot of testing and it takes a lot of people getting on board philosophically for something like that. And so, um, but you know, I do hope that people understand that like, we know <laughs> that like something like that <laughs> has to happen and, um, we're doing it the best that we can with all the yeah. best intentions. You know, there's something yeah. I would like to say based on that. And that is like, when we go, we're all web designers, web developers, whatever you call yourself in this group, the people listening and watching, like we know how difficult it can be to build a product that is a website for a very finite audience with a very finite set of tools and features. And so these guys are out there trying to build so, and like, and we have to be careful, like there's things we'll do so that our clients don't mess it up, right? Like we have to try and like make sure it's client proof if they're gonna get in there. Like imagine the, like the Elegant Themes gang trying to idiot proof it from all of us. Like, can you imagine even like what they have to go through to get this to the point where it is stable and allows for all of these things. And then like you guys put all this thought and effort and energy into it and you release new buttons or widgets and people say, stop doing those things. We want performance enhancements. And then you <laughs> announce performance enhancements and people are like, well, why can't we change the header? And like, it's like, you, it's almost like you can't win. Can't and I think, my, I think, my, I, think I wonder we can. like how I you guys deal with that though. You, <laughs> think she can. I, you know, but, the, the way that you handle that is, you you empathize with you all drink of it, a lot right? you, or you, I don't I mean yeah. is it alcohol the solution alcohol is a solution <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, you know it it really is uh, about 
understanding that everything is valid, right? If someone's asking for something, that means they want it, right? If they didn't want it, they wouldn't ask for it. And the goal is to make everybody happy. And, and you know, the saying, you know, you can't make everybody happy is, I, I, I don't think it's true. I think that there is a way to make everybody happy or build a framework that allows everybody to be happy. And right now we don't quite have that, right? And we're only ever gonna get there with the power of the community, the power of the third party developers, and the boat we have right now doesn't allow for that capacity. And so that's what we have to get to. Um, and we have learned a lot over the past 10 years, you know, and we, um, we get to kind of like make the decision of whether or not we want to just like keep, you know, stuffing stuff into Divi um, or like kind of take this approach of like, again, like what would we do if we started from scratch? Um, and then this is what we would do. And it's like, well, how do we do that with 10 million websites built on Divi? Right. And so it's a, it's, it's that no is small a, undertaking. Yeah. And that's a, that's a development struggle, right? Like I can just say, we'll just do that. <laughs> just do this. Right. That's easy for me to say, but, um, you know, the the dev team at Elegant Themes is has been doing a ton of work on performance because again we can't we can't just keep putting stuff in Divi and have it be incrementally getting a little bit slower, a little bit slower, a little bit slower until it's a lot a bit slower. And so um A little bit faster now. Yeah. A little bit faster now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what it feels like. And so like we're at a wedding. Yeah, and so if we can get to the point where we can kind of fulfill this, um, you know, kind of three to four phase performance um, strategy that Nick has announced. It's going to be really, really cool. I've seen some of it in action. It is, it is really cool. Um, it's, it's, it is, it's pretty impressive, you know, and I don't want to keep like taunting everybody with it, but it's, it is going to be great. And it's, and, and then there's kind of like another phase that is really, really cool that we're all going to be very excited to, to launch eventually no no dates on that but um there's like the improvement stuff that nick has talked about and we get us like you can't just say that and then give zero come well, on spill like, the tea kenny you know it, it, it you know we don't just get to say let's go from this divvy to that divvy right there is an in-between right. and for us to even get to the in-between we have to do a lot and so we're enabling ourselves as a product to get to the in-between um and uh, that in between is going to be really, really cool. It's just going to be a faster divvy. It's going to be not just, we're not talking about just the front end of your website. We're talking about building and not having to wait for things to move and appear and things like that, right? It's just going to be a very faster divvy. And um, at the same time, we're opening up the gates to third parties, we're opening up the gates to more options design options, more features, more functionality within the builder. Um, and once we have the ability to do that, we get to finally like rethink about like what Divi actually looks like, how it actually works, how someone clicks on something, how someone moves something, how someone adds something. And so there's just so many phases and things that has to happen until that can actually happen. Um, and that's the stuff that, you know, we're working on that we'll be working on for a little bit of time and stuff that is not cool and sexy until it's launched right and so uh there's not even a way to really talk about it again right like you're saying well like you can't just say that and not tell us what it is it's like because it's very like elusive it really is and um it would basically right. be it would basically be like you know if tim said hey i'm redesigning overlays and it's like well what are you doing we he's are. like and he says well it's actually going to be yeah. pretty much the same product it's just going to be way better better <laughs> and so it's like sometimes you can't define better yet and uh yeah. we can't we can't define better yet you know there's a I lot of what we can go off though is elegant themes have done a couple of things a couple of times right like elegant themes went from themes to divi and that was this massive leap and yeah. none of us saw it coming and then it came and we were like holy cow what is this thing this is something we've never seen before and we slowly jumped on board and then elegant themes did a thing where 
it went from the block module to the visual visual mode. And it took a lot of us who were around for a long time, a little while to adjust and to come on board with this new amazing thing. But again, it was something we had never like seen before and we could have never imagined. We weren't even necessarily really asking for it, but it came and now it makes our lives like the whole world better. I imagine this new phase is a bit like that, those two things of like, it's hard to imagine in our mind what it is, but it's new and it's big and it's different. And sure, we might be thinking of other things, but this is going to change the way that we build moving forward. And we will be so thankful in the future that Elegant Themes are thinking beyond what we can see or what we can imagine to something, the future of being able to build websites is going to be a whole different thing. And it may be bumpy and it may take us a while to adjust to whatever the new thing is. And it may take a while for it to actually come to us, but we're going to be so thankful that we stuck around to be there for the new thing when it comes. Yeah. Like yeah. I couldn't have explained what those other two things were before they came, but now right. I know exactly what they are and I'm so thankful. Can I, all right, I know what it's going to be. Yeah. I'll, we're going to build websites <laughs> via Alexa. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, Sarah brings up a good point, like reinventing yourself in order to stay ahead of the curve, you know, and, and be able to continue innovating and everything. Cause it's, yeah, the phases that Sarah mentioned was elegant themes and then Divi as a elegant themes as a company, but then Divi as a product reinventing itself right where it's like yeah you look at divi 1.0 and you look at divi 4.0 like very different products uh and a lot changed in between obviously but um yeah it's going to be interesting to see so we we've already gone way past our normal one hour um but what we didn't want to do was <laughs> cut kenny off what i did good thing i <laughs> was another hour yet kenny <laughs> you'd be, be out of so, here uh, we normally what we do on Divi chat is final thoughts, but, uh, I say we just let Kenny give his final thoughts and anything yes. additional Kenny that you want to add, um, about Divi and the future and stuff like that. Um, so that later we're not kicking ourselves being like, Oh, we, we cut him off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm just kind of reading some of these comments, right. And it's like, some of them are like, a lot of it's like about time frame. <laughs> You know, yeah. and, it, and and it's like, we if if we knew, we'd tell you, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's it's one of the problems about having one code debt and two a, a bunch of users, right? And so, um, we don't know because we keep running into new things all the time. And uh, it you know, if we're running into a couple things, imagine what happens when millions of people get their hands on it. So. You know, we're we're doing the best we can, and and we are realizing that some of the reasons why development takes a while is because of that code debt. And so, how do we, you know, split our efforts into both like cleaning up that code debt while also also trying to like release features that are like on this like thing that we know is going to like potentially be redesigned. <laughs> and so we're we are we are in a kind of an interesting phase if we look at like 2020, 2021, right? It's it's definitely an interesting phase for divvy and elegant themes as a company and it's something that i don't think we've ever experienced as a company we're the biggest we've ever been um and we kind of have like a lot of weight on our shoulders right now and um again we're not we're just we're not gonna be able to fix that with a quick fix and so um there's just a lot like more than you can imagine moving parts um and and we don't have all the answers right like truth be told we don't have all the answers. And so for a time frame, you know, the best I can give you is like, look at the hist history of the past three years of Divi and its development, um, what we've been releasing and what we want to do is 10 times bigger than that. So, you know, it's hard for me to be excited about what I'm working on and I'm extremely excited about what we're working on. Uh, it's the most proud I've been about ending something in a really long time. So um, I just hope that people can like, Stay excited if you to be in like, you know, again, I don't want to put time to it, but it's, you know, it's going to require some patience and it's, it's going to be worth it. What, uh, so, what can we do? What makes us the best for you? How do we, how do we, how, how can we be the best customers for Divi? When we're going to get there. 
<laughs> Stop bugging you to spill the tea. <laughs> no, I, I think that that pushes us. You know, I think that pushing us is the best thing that you can do. And um, but there's a way to do it, right? There's some people that that know how to suggest and ask for things, and there's some people that really don't. And at the end of the day, it's all the same. Um, it's you know, Tim kind of mentioned like, you know, if if somebody asks for it, we've already thought about it. It's not always true, right? There's there's a lot of things that we've been asked for where it's like, wow, that okay we really need to prioritize that, you know, and it's um, not that maybe we haven't thought about it at all, but it, you know, maybe it got asked in a certain empathetic way where we go, oh, wait, actually, we do really need to think about it. And we have a really cool way to potentially do it. And so I think the best thing to do is to like, constantly be asking for improvements, constantly be logging and reporting bugs, be constantly, mm -hmm. you know, speaking out to the third party community and telling them what you want, you know, trying to wrap your head around what Divi is and what it can be and understand what is going to be in the product and what is always going to be a third party extension. Right. And, you know, it's, it's tough to know the answer to that. Um, but try to think about Divi as a product that's not just for you, but about, you know, millions of users. And so, um, I, I think the best thing that you guys can do is just keep doing what you're doing in the most empathetic way to us and know that we, you know, we're people too. And we're Be nice, everybody. <laughs> we are kind. working extremely hard, you know, despite what some people might think. And so we are, uh, you know, we're excited over here. That's all I can say. And, um, it's tough when that excitement gets like, met with all this pessimism and like bummer talk and so you know keep us excited about the product as well um because when we get bummed it you know it, it's not good for anyone yeah i i can speak from experience as a product creator a much smaller capacity obviously but when i see negative comments it's almost like it takes like five to ten positive comments to kind of like offset that negative comment. And it's it's like negativity carries a lot of weight. And when you're putting your blood, sweat, and tears into products out there, like that negativity, like you feel it, you know, like Divi yeah. is Kenny and Nick's baby. And so like, yes, like Kenny will be the first to admit that Divi is, is far from perfect. Um, but yeah, when you are in the Facebook groups or you're on the blog posts and everything, like remember that these are guys that are, are like pouring their heart and soul into this product for us. And so, um, yeah, ask for things, report bugs, but do it. Use your please and thank you people. Use your please and, thank yous and be kind. Like I, I, I've seen Nick, uh, in the, in the Facebook groups, um, you know, he used to always kind of just ignore some negative comment stuff. And now, and we talked about it when we had him on, yeah. where now he'll, 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 so he'll respond <laughs> and yeah, he does it like so tastefully, but he'll call people out and he'll be like, look, uh -huh. like, you know, we, we were, uh, on holiday, like we were away for the weekend. Like we're people too. Like we have families. Cause I remember someone was saying something like during Christmas time, end of the year. And it's like, look, come on. It's yeah. the end of the year. Like we took time off to spend with our families. Like give us a break. <laughs> if there's anyone so. that should take more time off, it's Nick, but you know, we're, I, I think that <laughs> thick up, you know, Don along is in care kind of asking for mobile, mobile menu stuff. Like, you know, it's, it's a, it's a very specific ask, but it kind of, it goes back to the topical can't, right? can't just keep like, if you look at our CSS and if you look at our, like for lack of a better term, like modules that have to get loaded on the front end, it's our menu. Right. And so you have to look at that and figure out how do you solve that? Well, should we just add some more features to that? Should we just add more features to our blog module? Should we just add more features to our portfolio module? Or should we know that if we do that, we're going off the cliff, right? Yeah. And so how do yeah. we, again, we designed Divi as a theme with this idea that like, hey, you put a blog module in Divi on your website, it's gonna look like this blog module, <laughs> right? And we did quite a lot for 10 years ago, if you think about it, quite a lot of options for these modules. Um, but we, didn't think that Divi would 
become the enigma that it is today to where you would need a hundred different blog module layouts, right? We didn't approach yeah, the code it started in that as way. a theme, right? Like yeah. it started when you think about a, a theme that we all purchased, you didn't expect it to do anything more than what it did. Like you purchased yeah. it and you knew it was going to look exactly what, what you bought. Like that's yeah. how Divi started. So like, why are we surprised? Oh, because Divi became this like, revolutionary thing Monster. where you could create yeah. anything but that's yeah. not where it started like it <laughs> yeah. makes sense when you think about it yeah and so it again means... to... oh go ahead tim uh, uh no you finish what you're saying then i'll jump in you know it's like how do we get to that idea of, of yes you can make everybody happy and it's you know kind of freeman is mentioning this here is you know we don't build a hundred different layouts for a blog module we allow our third-party developers to offer 10,000 blog layouts, you know, yeah, nice. for, for our blog module. And so, um, you know, when you think about a feature request, try to think, try to think like a product designer, try to think like a, a you know, a, a designer and think, well, how, how would you approach this if you were, you know, if you were behind the wheel, how, how would you make a product that is going to make a lot of money and that is going to that people are going to buy into, right? Like, let's not talk about money, but like pe that people are going, to, are going to want, right? Are they going to want the uh, extension that, that does one thing or the extension that does 10 things really well? And so, you know, it really, it really comes down to this idea that um, usually your idea for a solution is narrow-minded. And so, and I'm not saying this to you or to anyone, I'm just saying like in general, you should think about whenever you come up with a solution, you should probably assume that you're not thinking broadly enough always. Um, and that, that's just a good way to think as a designer. That's awesome. Uh, talking about how when you guys started the process of Divi, it was just another theme, right? When back in, you know, 2013 uh, or 2012, I'm sure is when he probably started. Um, and you were on this release schedule every couple months releasing a theme. And I, I was a, a part of Elegant Themes back then uh, as, a, as a customer. And there would be one theme sneak peek and then there'd be a theme release. And it was like clockwork, right? And you could, <laughs> it was like, here's what it's going to look like. And then, it's, and then it's released. And it was like, everyone's like, yay, another theme in this collection of dozens of, of themes. And then Divi started and, and you guys gave the first sneak peek. And then it was like, months would go by and I was like, what's happening? Like, usually it's like every, you know, couple months are releasing something new, like what's going on here. And then, uh, October 10th, 2013, Nick did a, a blog post, uh, and the title was why our new theme is taking so long to finish and why it's a good thing where it was like, he's basically explaining like, Hey, like we've realized that this isn't just another theme. And this is, we've like gone back to the drawing board and we like, we're taking, you know, two steps back so that ultimately we'll take 50 steps forward, which you probably didn't realize would, would, would be that many steps forward. <laughs> but, um, and actually, so if you look at the top comment, it was from me and I'm just going to read it. Uh, <laughs> this looks incredible. A site built on Divi will look great in my portfolio. Is it safe to assume that this new page builder concept will be the backbone of all new themes moving forward? And I was kind of right. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, no, uh, put the link to that in the chat, Tim. What is it? You, uh, <laughs> it <was> amazing. <laughs> you, um, you know what you predicted was extra. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and and I predicted extra, and obviously, uh, you know, it wasn't just that the Divi page builder concept would be in all the new themes. It was that Divi was the new elegant themes, the essentially. Yeah. yeah. So that, that was amazing. after I think Nick posted that after like a four or five month wait to put things into perspective. Yeah, exactly. And people were like, "I've been paying thirty nine dollars a year, and I'm supposed to get you know <laughs> new themes." <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah so that is uh, we, awesome that you're the first comment on that post. that's yeah. so good <laughs> kenny I used to it. give me a hard time because i was well. i was the top comment on a lot of blog posts and you'd be like how are you doing that <laughs> <laughs> i'll never reveal my my tricks <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've gone way over. Thank you, everyone who have stuck it out with us for this now over an hour and a half 
podcast episode. Uh, it's our longest one ever. Our longest one. Also, I think the most attendees live ever. So that's pretty mm -hmm. exciting. Um, and definitely go back and watch episode Kenny Singh putting butts in seats. That's it. <laughs> go back and watch episode 200 where we had Nick Roach on and we, we talked about some of the future stuff too. Uh, so this, in a way, was kind of a part two to that episode. So go back and watch part one. And if you, if you already. want a part three where Kenny comes back and talks about something else, then you just have to <laughs> let us know what and then we'll try and suck you in. <laughs> yeah. And actually, one of the things that we wanted to talk about with Kenny was managing designers and we touched on it briefly and the reason why we didn't talk about that more is because i think that could be an entire episode so we'll definitely uh see what we can do to get kenny to come back on to discuss that because i think that would be a lot of value for our, our listeners here now the um, divi chat crew is a particularly friendly and appreciative bunch and if you when you're when you have a chance kenny if you go back and scroll through the comments that were left you will see that there are dozens of comments thanking you for your hard work and thanking the team and expressing how much they love Divi. So it isn't all, it isn't all trolls where we do, uh, we love you. And we, we foster a very like no negative, no negativity zone around here. So yeah, thanks so well, much for what you do. Keep up the great work. Thank you. And thank you for pushing us. Yes. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you everyone uh, that tuned in live and thank you everyone who is watching this replay. Uh, definitely subscribe to Divi Chat if you haven't already uh, on YouTube, Facebook. Um, and one thing that we would love, 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 love is if you give us a five-star review. You can go to ratethispodcast.com slash Divi Chat and give us a review. We'd love to hear your thoughts and we'll probably even read it on a live episode. Oh, yeah. I know right you're you'll be famous <laughs> assuming Divi it's a famous. good one yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. only if you're nice <laughs> see you next week everybody take care bye-bye <laughs>